Phoenix, Arizona, a beautiful city surrounded by desert in the American Southwest. Currently, the metropolitan area has a population of just under 5 million, making it the 10th most populous metro area in the United States. But in recent years, extreme temperatures and access to water has raised the question if this city will continue to grow and thrive, or if it's on its last legs. Let's take a look at the reality of this and figure out if Phoenix will be a habitable spot by the year 2050. First off, we must answer the question of why Phoenix was established in the first place, especially if the area is known for extreme temperatures and a lack of water. Well, back in the late 1860s, a man named Jack Swilling saw the area around modern-day Phoenix and decided it was a great place to farm. So he helped with the establishment of the Swilling Irrigation Canal Company, and the new company began digging a canal from the Salt River to his newly visioned farmland. By 1868, a community had sprung up, with the main draw being agriculture. Flash forward to 1940, and the population of Phoenix had grown to around 65,000 people. With the entrance of the U.S. into the Second World War, thousands of men entered the area to train and prepare to be sent off to war at the surrounding Air Force bases and Camp Hyder. However, when the war ended, a great number of these men moved permanently to Phoenix to attempt to establish roots and continue on with their lives. The only problem was that there wasn't enough jobs for all of them immediately following the war. This was short-lived though, as many companies saw this as an opportunity and began to set up branches in the quickly expanding city. With this explosion in population and change in occupation, Phoenix was now known to be both an industrial center and distribution hub. Now looking at modern day Phoenix, it has the title of being one of the hottest and driest cities in the USA. But even with this distinction, people continue to move there. Why is that? Well, one reason is based off it being in the desert. Although it may be a reason for its potential downfall, there's really nothing stopping the surrounding suburbs from expanding. Currently, the Phoenix metropolitan area measures in at just over 14,500 square miles, which is equal to just under 38,000 square kilometers. This includes 31 different communities which speaks to the amount of land available for development in the area. Another reason for this continuously growing population is the weather. Although the heat can be extreme, especially in the summertime, temperatures are consistently warm year-round and there isn't a ton of extreme weather, other than the heat, that hits this area. And with the realization of a decently priced air conditioner, it is reasonable for people to stay indoors during the hottest part of summer days and enjoy the cooler mornings. This plays into the stereotype that a lot of elderly people move there to retire as they can enjoy the nice warm winters and just turn on their air conditioners in the summer. And that's if they even stay there for the summers, as a lot of retirees have a different estate that they would head to in the warmer months. One can see that there's a lot of good reasons for people to move to and stay in the city of Phoenix, but now we need to take a look at some of the potential downfalls the city's beginning to run into and will continue to run into in the future. First off, we're going to take a look into Phoenix's access to water. There's a headline floating around the internet that Phoenix is having trouble with their water sources, especially with the Colorado River continually drying up. However, Phoenix does not get all of its water from the Colorado River. It also gets it from the Salt River and Verde River, as well as from ground aquifers. Because of the diversification of their water sources, the city of Phoenix has stated that they are not worried about their current water supply, and there wouldn't be any major usage restrictions over the next decade, even if the drought continues in the west. Even though there won't be any major water usage restrictions over the next 10 to 15 years, there have been restrictions on new homes being built in the suburbs on the outer edge of Phoenix. It has long been a practice for new homes and communities to pop up to extend the Phoenix metro area, but recently, the state of Arizona is not allowing developers to build these new homes unless they have a plan on where the houses and communities are going to get their water for the next 100 years. And the one place they won't be able to get their water supplies from underground aquifers. This is because these aquifers have been overused for the last few decades and they can take hundreds to thousands of years to get refilled. This is not to say that these homes can never be built, they just need to guarantee that they're going to get their water from anywhere but these underground aquifers. So overall, the city of Phoenix is still doing fine in terms of access to water, even with the drought happening over the last 20 years. But let's switch gears and talk about the temperatures the city has been experiencing recently. In the summertime, temperatures obviously increase, but in 2023, 
Phoenix and its surrounding area experienced 54 days where the temperature was recorded at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or 43 degrees Celsius, or more. This caused widespread heat warnings and potential danger for those spending large amounts of time outside. Especially in the summer, the demographic that's most affected is the homeless population, as it may be tough for them to find a reasonable spot to cool off. As a result of this, Maricopa County, which is the county Phoenix is in, set up dozens of cooling stations as a way to give the homeless population a place to go, cool off, and grab a bottle of water. However, these cooling stations are not perfect as a lot of them close up in the evening even though nighttime lows can still hover in the 90s. It is tough to come up with a solution because on one side, you could say to have the cooling stations open 24 hours per day, but that requires additional funding, which the county may not be able to afford. Also, this problem will not be going away in the future, so they almost need to come up with a completely new idea to help get this problem resolved. Also playing into this is some of the city's infrastructure. Phoenix, as we discussed earlier, is a metropolis with a ton of urban sprawl, and with this sprawl comes concrete and asphalt, and lots of it. This asphalt does a very good job in absorbing and retaining heat throughout the day, then releasing this heat into the nighttime air. So not only does it increase the surface temperature during the daytime, it also increases the air temperature of the area in the nighttime. Again though, Phoenix is beginning to combat this in a very cool way. They are starting to paint their streets with a grey reflective paint with the hope of getting some of that heat reflected back into the air rather than it being stored in the streets. And luckily, this has actually worked as temperatures of black asphalt were measured to be 10 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than asphalt painted with the grey reflective coating. When comparing neighborhoods with black asphalt and painted asphalt, the results also showed a contrast. Neighborhoods with black asphalt were recorded to have a temperature of 0.3 degrees hotter during the daytime and 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit hotter in the nighttime. For now, it seems as if the city of Phoenix will continue this practice, especially if they keep getting promising results, specifically in the nighttime. Other things worth mentioning that the city of Phoenix is doing to attempt to cool the temperature in the city is planting hundreds of trees to provide shade and experimenting with reflective roofing material. By planting trees in strategic places around the city, there will be more access to shade for people, but also less pavement and concrete exposed to the sun. By having less pavement and concrete exposed to the sun, there's less heat that can be absorbed by these materials, and therefore less heat released during the evening and nighttime. The hope behind this, like painting the streets with a reflective paint, is to decrease temperatures especially in the evening and nighttime. This is also the goal behind the reflective roofs, as less heat will be absorbed. Adding on to this, the interiors of buildings should also drop in temperature if less heat is absorbed, which could give some of the air conditioners in the city a much deserved break, especially in the summer months. So the question still remains, will Phoenix be habitable by the year 2050? I believe it will be, and I think it's even going to grow and continue to thrive. One important aspect I'm looking at when making this decision is the fact that the city of Phoenix and Maricopa County recognize that there is a problem and they're taking steps to mitigate the issue. By having a plan and even dedicating a branch of their local government just to heat reduction, it shows that this problem is being taken seriously and they're willing to invest money to try and find a solution. Even though worldwide temperatures look like they're going to continue to increase in the foreseeable future, Temperatures in Phoenix may be able to stabilize or even drop if efforts like this continue. And because of that, I believe Phoenix will continue to be a thriving metropolis in the American Southwest. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for my next video, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you next week.